really good topic. Yep. Let's move on to our next topic. Creative you know, inspiration. Steve's uh, struggle would have been uh, not catching a certain Pokemon. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I would have loved her. Steve's got a lot of struggles, man. He was telling me about <laughs> CVS or lately, and oh, it just sounds like a nightmare. Um, yeah. But creative struggles, or sorry, creative inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> um, through creative struggles, probably like uh, I wanted to talk about. Uh, okay, so so I'm I'm in the video game industry. Um, Alan, you're in the um, you're in the you know film movie and animation. film animation via VFX industry. Yeah. Uh, Ian, you're a penny pusher. So <laughs> I'm, I'm you're a, yeah, you're a stiff neck uh, stiff neck desk, bean desk counter. Man. Bean counter, <laughs> your bean counter. Um, but that doesn't mean we don't, you know, you don't have creative inspiration to do the thing. Like you were just talking about how you want to do the things around the house. Uh, that takes a level of creativity in like in, oh, yeah. in what you want to do. And, and so I wanted to talk about where you get inspirations uh, th- for your creativity. Um, you know, what what are what are the things that you look for? What are the things that inspire you when you have a roadblock in creativity? What do you go to? How do you how do you unblock that? Are, is there anybody in the creative field that you're, you know, inspired by or envious of or mm. admire? Um, well, and um, I actually had a question for Alan. Uh, yeah. With your um, ADHD and everything, do you feel yeah. like that helps you be more creative sometimes? Uh, sometimes it can be amazing. Like, sometimes it's really great because there's this thing, like, called hyperfocus. I'm sure, like, some people get it just in general where you basically are, are like, something is so stimulating to you you're like tunnel vision like nothing exists outside of like where your your gaze of focus is falling so like if i'm working like if i like for instance like on the last movie or just any movie where i was like hands-on working on something and i really wanted to get it to look great you know amazing amazing looking i can just be like sucked in the zone and the next thing i know it's like you know 10 p.m and i have this great looking you know shot that's going to be great for the movie but it's like my phone's been blowing up. Like, you you, you go, like, where the hell are you? Yeah. You're like, it's 10 p.m. Like, yeah. you work on a shitty part of town. Like, you bike, you bike to work. Like, I, I haven't heard from you. Like, are you dead? Sarah, <laughs> yeah. same thing. Sarah's like, when are you coming home? Like, I don't know, because like, I will get in those tunnels. Yeah. So it's just like everything kind of just like goes away. But it's great if you can like hone that to just do you know the the X the X task and then quickly move to the next one or like make sure you're just kind of aware to like let people know like what's going on just so they're like kind of like click tune into your brain but if they don't then they're just like what the fuck is wrong with this person <laughs> the most exhilarating thing is like knowing it's it's almost like when you have this creative project and you've broken it down to an IKEA like structure of like what you need to do and the finished product in your head you see it so clearly and you're just like I got this I know exactly what it is. you're just banging out the tasks you know what I mean yeah. but the problem is is it you know it's it takes a while to get to that like ideal perfection like yeah. art right so but you just know exactly so you're just like boom, 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 and this and that yeah. and this and that and, boom, 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 and you're just going and you're going and you're going and it could be like a day project but like you're trying to squish it down into the afternoon nighttime yeah. right but yeah I was gonna say so, the ADHD thing like, like the hyper focusing was really good when I was just working like hands on stuff. Mm-hmm. But now that I have to like juggle like way more tasks and like people's like priorities and all that kind of stuff, it's not as good. Yeah. Um, because it's like I can't spend three hours working on, you know, some some artistic part of it because then there's gonna be like six people that are like, hey, I like need help right now, whatever, yeah. come over here. So it's just like really kind of dropping some of that and learning to, to multitask better. You, so should, cool. you should check out um, the leadership pipeline. Mm-hmm. It was made by two. Um, oh no, no, I'm thinking of Creativity Inc. Uh, Leadership Pipeline is a really good book. It describes the the different um, the different levels of uh, IC management leadership. Uh, major leadership and then leadership of major leadership and they oh, describe wow. it as like a pipeline and the different turns are what you know causes friction and um, causes trouble for people to transition um, but they give really great examples and really great um, tactics and strategies for those moving into those different uh, levels and the nice. hardest one is the first turn which is the IC the individual contributor contributor to someone who manages individual contributors because um, it's really easy for them to see a problem put somebody on it and when it doesn't meet their expectations they they want to get hands on and they go yes they, right exactly I have that struggle right now everyone does every yeah. single person does um, and it teaches you how to evaluate that and to handle it um, which is really good 
So just yeah. being able to believe in your people um, and in and, and the concept of decision versus direction, right? Yeah, like, try to point them, Yeah. hey, this is where we're going. Like, you're going this way, yeah. let's try this way. Yeah, and then yeah. just kept, uh, catching up with them and stuff. Really good book. Highly recommend it. Um, yeah, and um, so before I was in the financial industry, I was in um, uh, the real estate world, and I sold foreclosed homes. So... And what, what I would have to do, I would have to get creative a lot of times. So in that world, I was not behind a desk all day. I was actually more creative. I, I had to pick colors and, and s fix things and, and repair things and, and try to juggle also spending money. So you have to be kind of, hey, we, we can do this project here and it's going to be this much, but let's try to do it this way and... Mm -hmm. You know, and it's going to be more cost efficient and get the job done. So yeah, yeah. You're like, you're like actually, those home, those twins that like redo like homes and stuff. Property brothers. Like, property brothers. Yeah. So <laughs> you're like I, a I property was, brother. Exactly. I, I'm the third brother. <laughs> what? No, they already have, they have a third brother. Yeah. I'm the fourth then. Damn it. <laughs> I think they have a fourth brother too. Yeah, they okay, got I'm five. I'm a cousin. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, I was um. I would have to walk into these properties, and I mean, you can imagine some of these foreclosures would just were ridiculous. But um, what I ended up doing, though, is that just being out like at a friend's house or other people's places and everything, I now just look at like how things are built and what they have here and there, and I would take these ideas and then bring them to the houses and mm -hmm. kind of like work with them a little bit. So that was pretty cool. I still do it to this day. Like mm -hmm. I cannot walk into a house without looking at Analyzing. baseboards and and seeing if there's possibly signs of like a, a roof leak or or You're like, like cracks in in that episode of office when he when yeah. they go to the the CEO's house and he's just like inspecting the shit out of the house like yeah. he's up on the roof checking the fireplace <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> trying to figure it out yeah so i mean i i'm not like obvious but i my mind wanders to that all, sure. like all the time now and like i'm like i'll look at something i'm like oh that's a really cool idea how can yeah. i incorporate that in my own house now that's, you yeah. know or do that you know, and and, and that's where I get into those little projects that I haven't finished, and it's like, damn it. <laughs> I think you're right, and, and what's interesting is I think that I think that's a really great like that's that's the basis of that creative inspiration that we're talking about. Because I do the exact same thing when I'm playing video games, or uh, I'm a little bit more. Maybe maybe that's not unfair to say, but I was gonna say like being in an entertainment video game. There's a lot of stuff I can I can incorporate from entertainment. I can I can incorporate from movies, pop culture. I can incorporate from other video games. I can incorporate from right. like just uh, in general entertainment, like books and stuff and novels, because I work somewhat narratively. And content is about telling a story through gameplay, and so I can I can present the player with all different types of stuff that I've been inspired by. Um, so. Uh, I do the same thing. Like I'll analyze movies or like a cool story or like yeah. a fun time that I had in, in a game. And you know, it's also comes uh, subconsciously to me as well. But when I'm working, when I'm working on stuff to find creativity or, or, or being creatively inspired, I'll just research what it is that I'm trying to do um, based on like the core nugget. If it's like, okay, you got to fight something or, you know, you are in a city and you're skateboarding. It's like, well, okay, has there been anything really, really cool in a city that, like, would be awesome to skate on? And I, I just mm. YouTube, I started Googling, like, I try to, like, I basically build a collage of things that have inspired me. Mm -hmm. And that paints that picture of, of what I want to do moving forward. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Um, mine's, I, mine's pretty similar, I think. Like, look, like, film photography is, like, really big because like all visual effects and animation is basically just trying to recreate what you can get from a real camera because mm. there is something like we're just we've just been looking at film for so long that that's what our our bodies are like used to when we see it on like the the, the screen huh. we want to mm -hmm. see things that imitate what happens when film is like projected through a lens essentially so huh. it's not even like what our eyes see it's like, what film it's what a camera what a camera sees and a camera actually has, like, a better color, color palette than our own eyes. It can capture more color information than our own eyes even can. So what we see on film or on like a, a, a photograph is never what we actually see in real life. It's like 
That's better so cool. quality than that. That's so, crazy. So like yes. that that little nugget right there is creatively inspiring to me. The concept yeah. that we live in a world where we're not even seeing the full potential of something as small as a photograph is super inspiring. And I feel like you can take that yeah. nugget and apply that to something like in a game mechanic or in a game mm-hmm. scenario where like, yeah, this is just like just adding that nugget is so interesting uh, yeah. or wherever it may be. I don't know. Yeah. And there's there's actually the most recent thing that was really inspiring to me and like really uh, struck a chord was this documentary called um, Tim's Vermeer hmm. and I don't know if you guys either of you Clay I don't know if you remember from art school but Vermeer was like a painter during Yukiko do you know what what century 16th 17th century or something like that uh-huh. and all of his paintings basically like the way they're described is he was painting with light like cool. in a time when everything else kind of had that kind of look of of a little like not quite correct lighting on it and not quite the exact you know like the proportions weren't exactly correct Mm. um and this documentary is about this guy who's not a painter trying to paint a picture exactly the same as Vermeer did and I won't spoil like what happens in the uh, trailer in the movie because it's only it's like I want to say like less than 90 minutes. Oh wow. Um, so I would like really highly recommend it. It's like I had I went into it having no idea what it was about and I was just like engaged immediately because it really stuck to what like I do as a profession basically. Cool. But um yeah, it was basically him learning what sort of techniques Vermeer might have used in trying to learn it himself even though he's not a painter. So mm-hmm. give it a watch and uh, you'll see some really interesting uh like techniques and like discoveries in that. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jiro Dream- Dreams of Sushi I've heard is really great oh. and inspiring as well for someone like it's like creatively inspiring but like in the sense that like if you hit a roadblock keep trying right like you will yeah. you can polish and get better and get better and like yeah it's definitely beautiful it's like a beautifully shot um, documentary I mean looking at the fish with like the sauce on it and like it's glistening it's got like great lighting on it it's really I mean it's really satisfying to look at um, you know like I think I think sushi in general like has a very satisfying like texture and color palette too, yeah you know? like, it's very yeah, colorful like the reds and the gold colors and orange colors and, and the sauces um, and like the sauce on top, yeah, it's like the glistening look of it and everything. Yeah, there's um, a glistening. Also, also, yeah, <laughs> also the, 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 it's very inspiring because it's like this is the only thing that he has done, like become a master for like you know forty years. Uh, in the documentary, they say like the, the 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 underling cooks, you know, you have to clean for three years in the restaurant before they even let you touch the rice. Wow. And then you have to clean, you just have to wash rice, literally just washing rice for five years before you can go do anything else after that. So it's just kind of like that Japanese mentality of like mastering, you know, like dedicating yourself to like one one thing and becoming an absolute master at it before you move on to the next thing. And that's what Jiro is in the in the documentary. That's like how I play League of Legends. Extreme master of like everything. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is how I play sure. video games. No, I'm serious. Like I don't, this is why I only play Varus. Because I don't feel like I haven't mastered him yet. And the only wow. reason why I don't go on to a new character is because I feel like I'm not finished mm. doing the thing that I've, I've set out to do, which is feel comfortable in that character so much so that like I feel like I've done the best I can. In any situation in which I lose is not my fault. I can now move on to the next character. So it's really tough for me to move on. It's the same <laughs> way when I play a class in World of Warcraft. or what, like I just I want to master that thing. Um. I want to do it, and then and then I'll be comfortable. Because I, don't, I feel like there's unsolved... like stuff and things like business and that makes me feel uncomfortable yeah i i don't i definitely don't have that <laughs> i don't either. as soon as i lose interest i'm like okay who's next like <laughs> <laughs> that's good yeah, yeah. okay um, well that's because um we play a character once alan and we are already a master so. yes that's true yes. yeah that is very true you guys are the, uh, the amazing uh, how come you guys don't go pro uh just, just no time, time. just no time <laughs> time that makes sense. I don't want to make the other guys look bad. You know? Well, that too. I, exactly. That too. I mean, you That's guys really are so humble. At all. Yeah. You guys are so humble. Yeah, I'm the best. Yeah. I'm the greatest. I was, okay. okay. <laughs> Let's go on to our... <laughs> okay. Up sometimes? Uh, sometimes it can be amazing. Like sometimes it's really great because there's this thing like called hyper focus. I'm sure like some people get it just in general, where you basically are, are like something is so stimulating to you 
you're like tunnel vision, like nothing exists outside of like where your your gaze of focus is falling. So like if I'm working, like if I like for instance, like on the last movie or just any movie where I was like hands on working on something and I really wanted to get it to look great, you know, amazing, amazing looking, I can just be like sucked in the zone and the next thing I know it's like, you know, ten PM and I have this Topic. Yep. Move on to our next topic. Creative you know, inspiration. Steve's uh, struggle would have been uh, not catching a certain Pokemon. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I would have loved her. Steve's got a lot of struggles, man. He was telling me about <laughs> CBS or lately, and oh, it just sounds like a nightmare. Um, mm. But creative struggles, or sorry, creative inspiration <laughs> um, <laughs> through creative struggles, probably like. Uh, takes a level of creativity and like in, oh, yeah. in what you want to do and, and so I wanted to talk about where you get inspirations uh, for your creativity um, you okay. know what what are what are the things that you look for what are the things that inspire you when you have a roadblock in creativity what do you go to how do you how do you unblock that are is there anybody in the creative field that you're you know inspired by or envious of or mm. admire um, well and um, I actually had a question for Alan uh, yeah your um, ADHD and everything, do you feel yeah. like that helps you be more creative? It's great looking, you know, shot that's going to be great for the movie, but it's like my phone's been blowing up, like you, you keep goes like, like where the hell are you? Yeah. Yeah, like it's 10pm, yeah. like you work on a shitty part of town like you bike you bike to work, like I, I haven't heard from you, like are you dead? Sarah's <laughs> yeah. the same thing, Sarah's like when you come home, like I don't know, cause like I get in those tunnels. Yeah, so it's just like everything kind of just like goes away but it's great if you can like hone that to just do you know the the x the x task and then quickly move to the next one or like make sure you're just kind of aware to like let people know like what's going on just so they're like kind of I wanted to talk about uh, okay so so I'm I'm in the video game industry um, Alan you're in the um, you're in the you know film movie and animation. film animation via VFX industry yeah. uh, Ian you're a penny pusher so. <laughs> I'm, I'm answering them. You're a, uh, yeah, you're a stiff neck, uh, stiff neck desk, bean desk counter. Right. Bean, bean counter. <laughs> Your bean counter. Um, but that doesn't mean we don't, you know, you don't have creative inspiration to do the thing. Like you were just talking about how you want to do the things around the house. Uh, that 